Okay. So uh, you mean transgenic in the real sense, right? True sense yes, transgenic. Yes, yes. Like in the where we are. See knockout. In the, in the pronucleus of the zygote, yes, yes. right? Yeah. Huh. So uh, knockout and transgenic has almost no relation uh, almost never uh, transgenic is a substitute for knockout transgenic is a very poor substitute of knock in okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, because with transgenic you cannot get loss of function right yes now the knock in uh, like people used to do by transgenesis earlier <laughs> then they soon realize that you get a lot of artifactual data. <laughs> what you will realize uh, as we move along the transcription chapter that uh, depending on which part of the chromosome the transgenic construct gets integrated in, uh, its expression may or may not happen. Its expression may or may not remain uh, confined to the natural domain that you wanted it to be. So for a variety of reasons, transgenic is uh, best avoided. Nowadays, uh, very few people will do transgenic. But say you want to do a knock-in in the locus of SOX9. Hmm. Okay. SOX9 then, is a gene that is a uh, you know, uh, very uh, prominent in uh, testicle development, in cartilage development, many such. Yes. But you cannot knock in in TOX9 locus because it's a haploinsufficient uh, locus. So there you have no option but to go for transgenic. transgenic. Okay, got it. Yeah. Sir, when you talked about TRP operon, uh, you said like when the tryptophan levels is low, the MR, the tRNA for tryptophan will be low. Like, uh, how does uh, that? Charged tRNA. Charge, charged tRNA. Charged okay, okay. tryptophan tRNA will be low. We also have to discuss about log P. I will do it. Huh? Oh, then I will do it. Huh? I will do it. I have it uh, in my memory. I will be away to Kolkata from 22 to 26. Uh, I will try to do it in between in, in, in that time. I have uh, almost close to zero official engagement there. Uh, so I will try to do it at that time. I, I have it in my mind. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, sir, one another question. Uh, sir, like uh, sigma subunit or other uh, general transcription factors, yeah, yeah uh, data bound, uh, do they have any, uh, like uh, our ribosome has, has antibodies? Do they have any mass sequence? How uh, they will recognize and bind the special sequences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sigma subunit and Tata, uh, Tata uh, like TBP, Tata binding factor, they bind two Tata uh, sequence only. They bind two. Like in the ribosome. Huh? The like in ribosome, we have uh, SD sequence and uh, we have anti SD sequence on the ribosome. Here, uh, we have any such sequence or yeah. they are. No, 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 no. See, see, there it is RNA RNA interaction, right? Here it is yes. DNA protein interaction. And uh, but it is sequence specific, just like your restriction enzyme. They that's also a DNA protein interaction, right? Yes, sir. But it is extremely sequence specific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. okay, okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, and it is a very, if we are using a very strong promoter, then also there will be futile rounds of, uh, uh, sorry, futile rounds of initiation. It will be there. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like there are theories why this futile rounds are there. Uh, <clears throat> apparently, it is to check the fidelity and a lot of other things. But yeah, futile rounds are there uh, always in the in vivo. मुझे लगता है कि किसी ने पढ़ाई किया ही नहीं सर हेलो सर सर आई नीड ट्रिप्टोफन ऑफ रन दे आर से लाइक लीडर सीक्वेंस एंड एटीन्यूटर कैन आई एक्सप्लेन लीडर सीक्वेंस एंड एटीन्यूटर या सो द लीडर सीक्वेंस इज द होल सीक्वेंस द एटीन्यूटर इज दैट पार्ट वेयर यू हैव दोस डबल ट्रिप्टोफन कोडोन एंड द सराउंडिंग अमाइनो एसिड्स लाइक द शॉर्ट ओपन रीडिंग फ्रेम लीडर सीक्वेंस इज मच बिगर देन द ओपन रीडिंग फ्रेम सर व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ लीडर हां फंक्शन ऑफ द लीडर सीक्वेंस the function of the leader sequence is to uh, you know regulate the rate of uh, transcription uh, for this kind of uh, messages uh, which is uh, sensitive to concentration of metabolites or whatever some like uh, typically concentration uh, sensing uh, is the job of the leader sequence uh, uh, like uh, the 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 mostly the leader sequences are there for uh, yeah there is no non amino acid operon that i can remember which has leader sequence sir uh, in this, in that letter you say that leader sequence which is the having the codon uh, uh-huh. codon uh, like the codon having the tryptophan uh, amino acid repeats yes sir ha ha same as that the operon synthesis but the leader sequence is bigger than just the warf see this is a 14 amino acid warf right yes, the leader sequence is bigger than the 42 nucleotide uh sir uh, when the uh, tryptophan level is low if the ribosome gets uh, stuck on the le- leader sequence then how are the rest of the genes uh, uh, translated it is not translated it is not translated no that's when the <laughs> rna pol uh, falls off sir in the case of low tryptophan Okay, in the case, in the case of low tryptophan, then how? Uh, uh, yeah, so I think I think what it is is that it is a uh, kind of like a kinetic measure. It is uh, stalled, but it is it is like it will eventually move on. <clears throat> it is what we are talking about is a, a time scale issue. That uh, for the like if it moves slowly then uh, the strand 2 3 gets a uh, like the stretch 2 3 gets an opportunity to form the no not 2 2 3 like uh, uh, the 2 3 only 2 3 only if low level of uh, tryptophan 2 and 3 forms the but it is not a hair pin loop no the, 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 the more important than hair pin loop is the following uh, stretch of u okay which uh, b- does not uh, th- th- that signature does not get to form like a hairpin loop followed by the stretch of u is the terminator sequence for transcription termination se- uh, signal so <clears throat> that does not happen but uh, when you have low tryptophan then that termination sequence signature does not uh, get to form so rna pol moves beyond that after that we will form the whole uh, multiple polycystic mrna and ribosome will eventually move it is not that ribosome will not move at all that so like otherwise there will be no transcription at all right so like it just delays the ribosome to increase tryptophan yeah it just delays the ribosome enough for the uh, t3 strand to get an opportunity to form uh, the duplex 
and not the one two or three four rather. Sir, I was saying this leader sequences will be present in like uh, in any of the eukaryotic uh, proteins or genes. No. No, 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 only in prokaryotes. Because see, there is no advantage in eukaryotes. Transcription and translation are not coupled. Coupled, it is independent. And sir, one more. You uh, uh, were talking about the two component uh, system. So two component system is present in eukaryotes. Uh, two component system um, that NTR uh, C type. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like there we have histidine kinase and the response regulator. So, yeah. like in eukaryotes, also we have tyrosine uh, or yeah, the like, uh, Eukaryotes. Okay. So, uh, how does the signal transduction pathway work? Yeah. That a ligand yeah. binds to the receptor, then receptor becomes a kinase. That kinase phosphorylates uh, transcription factors. Then transcription factors gain access to the nucleus. nucleus. Then things happen. Hmm. So this bipartite two component system, one component is sensing the environment and the other component is sending the message, message. to There's the nucleus or, 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 or like at the level of transcription. Hmm. So uh, in eukaryotes, because these are spatially segregated, Therefore, the uh, message is sent through using transcription factor as the emissary. Hmm. Okay, it moves from the cytosol to the nucleus. Yeah, sir. Sir, uh, in case of the tryptophan uh, operon, uh, we see that in prokaryotes uh, there is uh, a co-transcription and co-translation, right? So, uh, can we speculate uh, that? Uh, the uh, mRNA is forming a uh, hybrid with the uh, open DNA structures, which is which may lead it to, uh, you know, uh, you know, in later part to, you know, free it up. Didn't understand from it. So, so like, mRNA uh, forming a hybrid with the uh, DNA. Yes. So try three strand hybrid. It is uh, possible. I am not knowledgeable. I uh, like uh, it is possible, but uh, what uh, physiological implication it has, I would not know. Yes. And sir, one more thing you were talking about enhance the trap. So I followed uh, the lecture. So it is like uh, I can like why it is known as enhance the trap. Yeah, <clears throat> because you were not providing an enhancer. You were only providing the reporter with a promoter. Yeah. Yes. Then wherever it will be trapped by an enhancer, there only the reporter will be expressed. Okay, yeah. So that's yeah. what it is. And then we are sequencing the enhancer or the promoter, whatever it is. Yeah, like uh, when you get expression in the... In an reporter. interesting manner, you know, like if you get expression all over the animal, you are not interested. But suddenly you get expression only in the pancreas, you want to know which cis element allowed it, uh, that to happen. Hmm. So you uh, sequence outward from the known sequence because the reporter gene, you know the sequence, right? Yes. So you sequence outward from the known sequence and then you try to uh, get uh, to the nearby region and figure out which part is an enhancer. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, sir, so what exactly do we mean when we say that it is a strong promoter? Because since we said that the promoter sequences consensus for more or less all the cells, do we say yeah. that it is the enhancer sequence which has a strong binding to the DNA binding no, of the no, tissue. No, 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 no. Let me explain. Let me share the screen. So 
So you see this, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. So now the consensus sequence is written as T A T A, uh, like 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 this, right? Yes. Now this is statistics, right? Yes. So it does not rule out the possibility that here, like in this uh, position, uh, it cannot be a T. Yes. If it is a T, then it will be a weak promoter. Okay. If it is a C, it will be a weaker promoter. Yes, sir. Okay. So just one nucleotide here and there within this stretch can make it a slightly weaker promoter. In fact, if you want to get to a little bit more detail of it, I do not know how seriously you read your basic biochemistry course. Um, do you remember the major group, minor group? Um, not really. Yes, sir, somebody. Yes, sir. Who remembers other than Ankit, someone else said yes, sir? I remember a little thing, sort of. Who is that I? From it. From it, huh. Do you know that the major groove is referred to as the second genetic code? No, sir. This, this. Didn't. Yeah. Study style biochemistry another time. Okay. Go to major group, minor group, like search. Major group, minor group, second genetic code. Okay. So the major group has very interesting signature of hydrogen bond donor and acceptor. Okay. And that is what uh, dictates the specificity of uh, like sequence specific binding. Okay. So uh, this sequence, ah, uh, like this is how many nucleotide? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you are seeing, right? So you realize that uh, this will, this will, after fifth nucleotide, it will be 180 degree on the opposite side. Do you realize yes, that? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's why you see your TBP has a saddle-like structure. It is like wrapping it around. Okay. It is having interaction surfaces around the longitudinal axis of the DNA. Okay. So there, you know, slight changes in base pair can uh, make a whole lot of difference. Like many transcription factors actually bind in pairs. And uh, there are very interesting kinds of transcription factors, whether the footprints are five bases away or 10 bases away uh, will uh, dictate whether the transcription factors bind on the same face or on opposite faces. Okay. Uh, very interesting uh, you know, ways you can think about it uh, uh, if you uh, look at Stryer. Aage bolo. Sir, I want to confirm one thing. Like, I have been given a situation where I have to find an enhancer for uh, a particular gene uh, like, or any cis regulatory module. So, first, I will do the uh, five prime deletion analysis. Am I right? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, how to, you okay. know? Let us, let us take. Uh example of any gene okay like I, I i will tell you the gene that i am very very fascinated about okay uh, that will be a good example for all of us
Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So I am very much interested to know how it is decided where the joints will form in our hands and legs. Okay. You see this whole mount iron density expression? Mm. This is a gene called Barrex1. This is expressed much before joint is actually formed. But if you express this gene in somewhere else in the limb, you will form a new joint-like structure there. Okay. Now, I am interested to know why this gene is expressed exactly where it is. And you can see it is not expressed anywhere else. Do you see that? It is only there in four spots, yes, four times. Okay. So now I want to know where, like how it is it, uh, like what are the factors that are dictating that it should be expressed there and uh, only there? How do I go about it? So it is worse than finding a needle in the haystack. Okay. Um, I have not come to that lecture. I think I will upload that on 22nd night. There, are, there is a scope for doing some bioinformatics, but so far that is not very potent. See, the problem is that there is no hard and fast rule vis-a-vis -vis where the enhancer will be with respect to the gene, like the coding sequence. I should not say gene, with respect to the coding region. It can be upstream, it can be downstream, it can be in the introns. While it is upstream or downstream, it can be a few thousand bases away, it can be, there are examples where it is a mega base away. Okay, now, just because you do not know what is the likely location of the enhancer, so you can uh, just try your luck. If you are lucky, try, fine. So what you can do is you can take 10,000 bases before the start side. Well, most of the times the enhancers are in front, okay, upstream, and not too far away. So you take 10,000 bases and you do the reporter analysis. But see, the problem is this. Well, if you do the reporter analysis in cell culture, that will not at all tell you whether it is uh, going to be expressed in the joint. Like, let me let me show you another data in that same paper. Another paper. Same slide. I have another data. This is my collaborator at Harvard. He worked on a gene called GDF5. expression <laughs> is uh, extremely specific, only in the joint. You are not seeing it here in any because here there's only the mutants. Huh. So, as a that. Okay. Now, when he he did not do any in vitro assay. He did everything in vivo, in mouse. So you can see he has taken a chunk that is minus 100 kilobase to, no, like plus 100. So, so he took 50,000 bases. Do you see that? Yeah. You look at the scale. That is downstream of GDF5. It is downstream because yeah. their lab has, ha, has been working on this particular gene, how it is expression is controlled for last uh, 35 or so years. Okay, so they have figured out that it is downstream. 
So they took this 50 kilobase region and then when they mutate potential areas, you know, like I will teach you all of these. You see, they are looking for signatures that are conserved between chick and mouse. Okay. Uh, and they are mutating those kind of areas. When they mutate it, you see that not only the joint expression is gone, expressions are appearing in places that are not normal. Okay. So that makes it that much more difficult to do any enhancer analysis in cell culture system. That if you get an expression in a cell culture system, you will not necessarily know whether you are looking at the real enhancer. You have to actually go in vivo. The moment you go in vivo, you cannot do transgene because transgene will have position effect. So now if you have to generate so many knock-ins, you are talking about enormous amount of money, a huge facility to keep mice, and a, an army of students. So that is what makes it so difficult. I will discuss with you, every year I do that and I learn things from students and then apply it in my lab, that how maximally can we exploit bioinformatic analysis to narrow down what to look for. Okay. So, in other words, if you are interested to know about downstream targets of a transcription factor or signaling pathway, we have almost figured it out perfectly. If you want to know upstream regulators like <coughs> of any gene, that is very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. No straightforward method exists. Okay. Okay. So, since nobody is asking questions, so now I will start the torture. Okay. Yes, so you tell me, you explain to me rationally why the switch mutants were found to be part of the mediator complex. Sir, uh, I want to inform you that uh, actually I haven't gone through your lectures and uh, completely because uh, I had my uh, mid-semester exam uh, earlier this morning. So I haven't still gone through your lectures very well. So once I complete them, then you can ask anything from the lecture itself. No, no sir, I, 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 will, I, will definitely cover, I will definitely cover this in a couple of days. Okay. Then you can ask. Who will answer that? Who will answer? Why switch mutants? were found to be part of the mediator complex. Collectively, aap log padhai kam kar diye ho. Before mid-sem, I asked questions, many hands were raised. So, this is a dangerous sign. Please, sudhar jao. the last uh, Sunday. Yeah, wow. 
से थोड़ा मैंने क्या बोल टेम्परेचर बढ़ गया इसमें आई कैन आई कैन नॉट अटेंड योर द डिस्कशन लेक्चर येस्टरडे आल्सो अच्छा ठीक है छोड़ देते हैं प्रोमिस बोलो आई डू नॉट नो सर हां आई डू नॉट नो सर प्रियांशु sir i sir i have not been able to watch 16 and 17 lecture yet 15 16 17 teen lecture ho chuka hai uh, yes so 16 and 17 i i could not 15 uh, yeah. so 15 you have done yes okay Okay, so you explain to me that how these uh, histone kinases act as sensors. I need a biochemical explanation of that. The histidine kinase or histone kinase? Histidine kinase. Histidine kinase. So he might have not read it because that is in seventeenth lecture. Hey? No, sixteenth lecture. Oh really? Yeah, sixteenth. Twenty five. I have studied what? Sir, in fifteenth lecture. नो नो ठीक है ठीक है सर हाँ ठीक है वो फिफ्टींथ लेक्चर की लास्ट आई आई फिनिश वो कह रही है तुम फिफ्टीन फिफ्टींथ लेक्चर की लास्ट में हाँ सर आई डू नॉट नो दिस लाइक बिकॉज़ दिस आई एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट्स आर नीडेड व्हेन यू विल Try to design your own experiments. So, just like like uh, when you see this Teton Tetoff system, these are like uh, they change the way biochemistry is done, like molecular biology is done. But these are we using the same concepts. In fact. You will see throughout. <clears throat> I do not know how well anyone from uh, biochemistry masters or undergraduate program here. Sir, me. Oh, okay. Sir, undergraduate biochemistry. What is KD? The KD is like the uh, dissociation constant. So, if the KD is high, the dissociation will be more favorable. Right. And if the KD is low, the association will be more favorable. That is very good. Now, what is you know like? Uh, <clears throat> Think of the histidine kinases. Okay, <clears throat> so they act as sensors, right? So, so uh, glutamine, when the concentration is high, then it is bound to the kinase. When it is not bound, then the uh, kinase activity is turned on, right? Yes. No sir. What? Huh? Oh. Yes sir. Yes sir. But when it is not bound, then it is turned on. The phosphorylation happens. Happens, right? Yeah. So now explain this in terms of KD. Hmm. So, uh, like the intrinsic affinity of the glutamine. 
to the histidine, uh, uh, the sensor is very low. So, in low concentration of glutamine, it will not bind the sensor so easily. But when it is present in a very high concentration, when glutamine is present in a very high concentration, then only it will, like the apparent affinity uh, will increase. So it is the like uh, like it's not the, affinity. It is affinity. Yeah, yeah, the affinity will increase. So when the affinity will increase, then there will be like um, you know no phosphorylation of the NTRC. When the affinity will increase, the glutamine will bind the sensor. So yeah. there will be no yeah. phosphorylation of the NTRC. See, affinity between two chemicals is a, their intrinsic property. So it does not change. Hmm. Because the affinity is low, that's why the KD is high. Yes. Okay. But the beauty is that in biological system, you will always see such suboptimal, uh, uh, you know, uh, property. If you think of much more simple thing, the, uh, the trip operon, say, you see the same principle, right? The repressor is not a repressor till tryptophan binds to it. Yeah, on high amount of tryptophan is so, so this is a recurrent theme. But on the uh, like, uh, what happens in the uh, in the lack of iron is Sir, so we can say it is a tight regulation to avoid the basal transcription. Can we say that mm -hmm. this thing, like uh, most, well, most of the you know, like uh, you, you, you see another very different example, but same concept. Go to slide number 13. So which topic? Which you see it, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, you see, you see, you needed multiple levels of regulation, right? One is that you don't have lactose, you have small amount of glucose. Another is for high amount of uh, lactose and low amount of glucose. Another is high amount of lactose and no glucose. Three no. different kinds. Yes. Now, this whole thing is being regulated at two different levels. One is straightforward the roadblock. Hmm. If there is no lactose, the roadblock stays. If there is lactose, then it will be removed. Now this you need to understand that this will be a high affinity binding. Because slightest amount of lactose, it has to be removed. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> that lactose will bind to it if and only if uh, sorry, like it will be removed if and only if lactose binds to it. So even if it's, there is no amount of lactose in the cell, it will still bind and it will be removed. Then the play comes here. Whether the RNA polymerase will be recruited to the promoter or not. That's why it has a weak promoter. Okay, the lack of the promoter is weak. Why? If the promoter was strong, then this additional level of regulation would not be a major deal. So, this kind of, like, so this additional level comes when there is no glucose, so cyclic AMP level is very high, and then this cap will be bound by cyclic AMP and then it will be recruited. So here again, it's a low affinity uh, situation. Here, yeah. it is, here it is a high affinity situation. Here it is a low affinity situation. 
So, biological system is actually regulated through this kind of, this is, you know, we need to understand that these are all gifts of evolution, that a system like this happened by random occurrences and then one particular characteristic was favorable for the organism survival and that state. And you will see that throughout the play is with this, uh, you know, binding affinity. It, it is a pure, more like a kinetics uh, uh, that is what regulates every aspect of physiology. Okay, so when we are studying, we need to pay attention to that because tomorrow, like if you, uh, who is in Santosh's lab here? Anybody in Santosh's lab, Santosh Mishra's lab? No? So those, I have to inform Santosh that your, your students are bunking. So there, when they are making these sensors, they use the same philosophy for their sensors. Hmm. Okay, so by, uh, like when the substrate is in low amount, it will the uh, affinity will not be uh, that much. The KD will yeah. not be that high. The KD will be. KD mm -hmm. is an intrinsic property for the two chemicals that are in question. Okay. KD and affinity. Hmm. What the KD can change, where the KD changes, a good example is RNA polymer is two C terminal domain. So when it is not phosphorylated, it has relatively higher affinity towards the promoter, but no affinity to cap binding enzyme, like capping enzyme. When it is phosphorylated, it has less affinity towards the promoter, but it gains affinity for the capping enzyme. When it is phosphorylated even more, then it is no longer uh, uh, having a stable binding with the capping enzyme, but now it is happy to bind to the splicing uh, machinery. So that's where you are seeing slight modulation of affinity towards a particular partner. You need to understand that in the nucleus, the capping enzyme was also there, the splicing factors were also there they did not associate with, all of them did not associate with it from the very beginning. They associated with it at different stages of transcription uh, elongation, which is dependent on the phosphorylation status of the RNA pol 2 So that's where the KD changes, like KD between RNA pol 2 and capping enzyme changed. But Strictly speaking, these are not the two same chemicals. RNA pol 2 before phosphorylation and after phosphorylation, strictly speaking, are two different chemicals. So, so conformational changes can affect KD, you mean? Absolutely. I don't have to mean it. That's all it is about. That's all it is about. Like, uh, you can change the conformation of a protein. Like, why do you think changing an amino acid change uh, like destroys uh, protein function? Depending so, on the interactions it has with, it, with the side chains. Uh, because it loses its structure. Even a slight change in structure can make its interaction with its partner either weaker or stronger. The moment you violate the evolutionarily selected optimum condition, now when you are changing an amino acid, then you are most likely changing 
either charge or ability to do hydrogen bonding or ability to engage in hydrophobic interaction, you are changing one of such properties. When you are phosphorylating, you are pretty much doing the same thing. Okay, so that's why phosphorylation is such a powerful post-translational modifier. Achha, any other question? अगर पढ़ाई नहीं किया हो तो सवाल करने की सवाल ही नहीं होता है। So I you are हाँ. saying it is not the apparent affinity which increases when like if it is uh, if you take the two component system the intrinsic affinity of glutamine to NTRB is low okay and hmm. if glutamine is present in high concentration it it can bind the sensor so this you are saying. Yeah, yeah. That is so the it is not the apparent affinity which increases. Yeah, oh. that is the concept of KD, right? KD is on the right hand side, you have the dissociated ones, and yeah. on the left hand side, you have the individual ones. Yeah. <clears throat> the more you supply the individual chemicals, yeah. the probability of being in a stable association increases. Now it's this. That's as simple as that. Okay, so uh, we will end this class uh, in the end this discussion hour. But uh, please uh, uh, study a little bit more. Study a little bit more. Otherwise, uh, uh, this is my favorite chapter. So I tend to uh, get really ambitious when setting questions from transcription regulation. Okay, please study a lot. Okay. Chalo. Tada. Bye bye. Sir, next discussion hour will be on Monday. No, no, Friday, 23rd. Friday, 23rd. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay, sir. 8 p.m. Okay, okay, sir. <coughs> uh, I will be in Calcutta, uh, but okay. uh, online is a good for me, but I. Okay, okay. Bye.